It's time to review Netflix Avatar The Last Airbender with Albert and Kelvin. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, eight episode series for this Avatar, the live action one. So the Albert here, he remembers a lot more of the cartoon version. So he definitely could do a, lo- a lot more comparison than me because I vaguely remember stuff. Yeah. Well, let's probably let's probably start by saying we both grew up with the show. Um, yeah. When was the last time you actually rewatched the show? Uh, COVID. So twenty twenty. Fair. I've yeah. the last time I watched it in full was also around that time. But ever since then, I've seen like a bunch of random episodes since i'm so i'm i'm like i'm a mm. diehard fan i've watched this series over and over and over uh also like cora not as much as the last airbender but also like the legend of cora um and i i like to claim that this the, the animated film animated show is my favorite show of all time period live action or animated uh so yeah i pride myself as like a pretty big avatar um avatar like fan so yeah i mean you do I've, have I've, the, the shirt, shirt right there uh, Toph represent Earth Kingdom. So, yeah. Is it Toph your favorite character? I, she's she's always up there. She's ever since she came on the show, I was like, I love Toph. Um, so yeah, she's she's up there, top three, probably. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. But anyway, let's uh get started, I guess, on the discussion here and the review. So yeah, uh, mm-hmm. just for, this is going to be spoiler review. You're going, yeah, we're going spoiler for, for the whole series. So yeah, that's yeah. a spoiler warning right there. Yeah, I think because we're gonna we might have some like comparisons with what was in the show and what's not in the show. So yeah, spoiler warning just in case. Yeah. Uh oh, I'll, I'll start first, I yeah, guess. Yeah, why don't you no. start? I'll I'll generalize first. Uh I'll say I think the aspect the performance mainly for Aang and Zuko, I really like those two. Those two are basically the main parts of the show for season one at least hmm. yeah um however um i'll say my negative thoughts for later but the good parts first <laughs> yeah that those two performance i like i like some of the action sequence the action se- sequence actually looks cool okay yeah especially was it the kyoshi warrior episode kyoshi i think Warriors. that's the second episode mm-hmm. and then even the final one where they got the whole moon spirit thing, the that that whole thing looks cool. The visual looks cool. <laughs> um, I I like that they show a bit more of the brutality, especially we get to see more of how menacing Ozai actually is. Like he just burns people alive. We hear the screams, we hear all those kinds, and we get to see the what's the name? The Northern Air Temple. The one that they decimate? That's a Southern Air Temple. Southern, a Southern Air yeah. Temple, yeah. The one that they the, decimate. It's near the South. Um, uh, oh, yeah. The was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where they kill everyone there. So that was like, whoa, pretty cool. I quite like that part. And yeah, um, pretty much that for now, I think. Yeah. How about you, Bert? That's fair. Uh, yeah, uh, you mentioned Ang and Zuko, played by Gordon Cormier and Dallas Liu. Uh, so shout out to them. Um, for me, uh, I think I've come to the conclusion. I've talked to a couple of my friends about this. I think I've come to the conclusion that the Avatar, the Last Airbender Netflix live action series, um, did a lot of things good, did a lot of things bad but they don't do anything that is better than the animated show. I agree. And I've also, like, I think I come to terms very early on, especially because how the show opened, literally the first episode, um, it's very different vibe, tonally, and even storyline. They add a lot of stuff directly in the very first episode. Um, so the fact that they said that early on, I my expectation was already directly changed from, like, oh, this is not a one-to-one remake. This is not going to be a one-to-one remake of the animated show. This is going to be an adaptation. They're going to take some parts of the show and they're going to make a twist on it. They're going to add some stuff. They're going to remove some stuff. And because I think I've accepted that like very early on, I was I am kind of like accepting of much of the changes. 
and it's kind of interesting because not all of them really work. There is one particular aspect that I want to mention. I think that work in terms of the changes and the addition that they did. Um, a lot of them I was like, okay, that's interesting, but I don't fully love it. But it does keep me kind of not entertained, but also like surprised and kind of curious what's going to happen because it keeps me at the edge of my seat of like, I don't know what's going to expect. If it's a one-to-one adaptation, I pretty much know exactly what's going to happen. And But in this one, even though I know, I'm still kind of a little bit surprised. Like the Omashu episode in particular, so, so many changes. They put like three different episodes, storylines, put into one, one and a one and a half because they two Omashu episodes. They put it combined into one. They change a lot of stuff. So yeah, it's like that particular storyline. They change a lot. Like even the uh, the spirit episode uh, where they met Heibai and they go to Avatar Roku um, yeah. and with June as well. That's like multiple episodes combined into one as well. So like in that sense, it keeps me like, okay, I have a feeling of where this is going. I don't know exactly what they're going to do with it. So it uh, it keeps it a little bit fresh and with the fact that I know it's an adaptation, if I don't fully like it, I'm like, I can always fall back to the animated show. There's something that I love. I know I can just do that. And this is just something different for me to like, all right, let's see how this goes. So yeah. Yeah, all right, all right. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, it's yeah. definitely better than I expected going in. Because at, you know, at first I was kind of hyped because the creator was involved and everything. Then they went away at some point, they right? Left. Yeah. Yeah, they left. And then we, and then I saw that promotion with Ang versus Boomy, and I was like, "Man, that looks kind of bad." <laughs> <laughs> so my expectation was like going down, but I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's pretty good. I like some of the edition. I think I'm pretty sure it's an. This one is an edition, right? The part where Zuko took the forty first fleet. fleet. Yes, that's definitely something new. The whole thing, um, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. The whole thing with the reasoning behind Zuko's banishment was changed. Mm. Uh, I mean, in both in both adaptation, uh, Zuko was banished, but the reasoning and how he was banished was changed. They add a lot more in this one. I think it's interesting that the addition that they made and that was revealed in episode six, which I think is also my favorite episode of the series. That is the. That is the Blue Spirit episode, so oh, which yeah, I know they they call it something else in the live action episode, but yeah, that's that's probably my favorite episode in the series. Yeah, yeah, but the the that, that addition, uh, info additional information of that fleet being yeah. the one that Zuko saved, I think it's a nice touch. And when they respect yeah. him a bit more, you know, I'm like, damn. Feels good yeah. for Zuko. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, just to touch on it, Michael, Dante, DiMartino, and Brian Konietzko, who are the creator of the original show, they were attached for some time and then they left because of creative differences. And I think a lot of us are like concerned when that happened. Oh, yeah, um, very much. But yeah, like the changes that I particularly like, as we're going to mention that, I like that they go into the air nomads more and they have more exploration between Gyatso and Aang because, yes, mm. we see that in the animated show, but not so much. And I like really like the relationship between Aang and Gyatso in this series. And uh, like you said, the brutality, it's totally very different from the show, from the animated show. Yeah. Because um, the animated show is like, it's on Nickelodeon. It's like lighthearted. There's a lot of comedy in it. It's fun, yet it's also serious. This mm-hmm. one is totally much darker. Uh, there is a little to non-comedy, which I know some people have issues with. I'm like fine with it. I do I yeah. wish there's more comedy. It, yeah, it's a different thing, I guess. You know, but so yeah, I'm like fine ton- with it. yeah, like tonally, it's yeah. very different. Especially again, the genocide of the Air Nomads was brutal, and there was dark. I was like, oh wow, that is. Was that an sick. addition? Um, they never show the, they, they never show the Air Nomads getting like ambushed. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. always mentioned. We see the outcome. We never see the Air Nomads getting like totally. Yeah. Uh- well, when when I first start the episode and uh, and that's the first thing we start on, I'm like, okay, okay, interesting, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. yeah, we we didn't get to see it right in the animated show, so yeah, yeah, it's that brutal. Cool. They really showcase like the brutality of fire, mm-hmm. um, which I think they did a good job with it. And yeah, uh, you mentioned visuals. I think visually it looks great. I love the visuals. Yeah. I don't know anything much about VFX, but I feel like VFX on elements could go very wrong but it looks really clean and nice with air bending the fire um the earth and water and ice and everything so i do like the vfx i like the costumes a lot the costume Uh, was great yeah the costume is good 
yeah. I see a lot of people saying online. This is just based on the online. I see a lot of people saying like, "Oh, they look like cosplay, and they don't think it's realistic enough." But in my head, I'm like, I rather see realistic. something authentic that looks good instead of something that's supposed to feel more lived in. And even then, I still think they live. They feel lived in the costume. It, it so I like seeing lived adapted. in. Exactly. For sure. Yeah, I I don't yeah. think it's that out of the world for people mm-hmm. in the like South Pole to be wearing those kinds of things. Right. You know. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, and talking about the VFX, the creatures, Appa looks amazing. Momo looks yeah. awesome. The Badger Mole. We don't get the... to see much of Appa and Momo though. Still see a you good know? amount. I feel like. I mean, but also also like also then. Really. Uh, I kind of forgot all... that they are there in the first place throughout the series. <laughs> Not... Uh yeah no that's fair um but yeah like all the other creatures the badger mole um oh, I'm blanking on June's pet uh, but that creature uh yeah it's also like a really good and even like all the spirits call Beihai, uh, hey hey bye and um once she that, that's the centipede thing is that Ko oh. Ko the the mass stealer man he looks jump scare amazing <laughs> you got jump scare I got jump scare I, I didn't get jump scare but I was oh. like I saw that I'm like that's creepy all right yeah, I, so I like where this is going I I really like that when Ko show up I'm like oh, okay things about to get real up in yeah. here yeah yeah like the he visual really the visuals good. the visuals are good yeah. the world building is awesome um. I think the fight choreography is really nice with the fluidity of every movement. Like I know they reference like different martial arts because it is based on different martial arts, different elements. Yeah. And I think the actors, considering uh, we're following mainly kids, literally kid actors, they are literally like I don't I don't know how old Gordon Cormier is. He's born in two thousand nine, which makes me feel so old. Damn. Um, I feel old. But like <laughs> they are all like um, Kia Wen. Uh, I'm gonna butcher her name. I'm so sorry. The one who plays Katara, Kia Wen Tiao. She's seventeen. That is Louis twenty one. Ian Osley is like 19, 20. So they're like literally like young kids and they're doing like all this choreography and it's like, it's so good. And even so good, like yeah. um, Fire Lord Ozai, Daniel Day Kim is awesome. And like every, all of the oh, he choreography fits so just, well like, as Ozai. Oh, he's incredible. He's so good. He's incredible as Ozai. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I think the chemistry between the cast is really well done between like Zuko and Iroh, between the trio that we follow. Um, I think the chemistry Whoa. is nice. I'll say this though. This referencing to the future parts of in of the animated, we get to see Uncle Iroh becoming buff in the prison. Uh, I cannot Paul, see Paul this Sun guy. He's gonna work out. turning bulk. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot we'll see this to... guy bulking. They might. They might omit. They might omit that storyline where Uncle Iroh gets buff. That's such a cool part of the story, though. But yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. Although talking about casting, there is like a few ca- casting which I don't necessarily love. Wait, I want to start uh, first. Okay, let's start. Let's let's trade off. Let's see if we have the same one. Okay, the first one that I, I she didn't show up much, but I saw her, and I'm like, damn, that that that's not right. Me. Okay. Okay. Azula's friend. Yeah, that was one of my favorite character in the show, in the animated. And I see you, May. I'm like. Uh, not really feeling it at all. I'll defend yeah. me because again, you barely see her. I don't That's think she have like two lines or something. So I'm curious to see yeah. how it goes in season two. Um, also, a lot of oh god, again, she's she's a kid. A lot mm-hmm. of people online are like harassing. In the comments oh, of like, oh, she's like bad at miscast. I'm like, hopefully she doesn't see any of those because that's gonna that's gonna be awful. Uh, so don't attack the actors. Um, but yeah, I'm. I'm f- I'm with you. I don't feel her as me yet, but I'm curious to mm-hmm. see how it goes in season two. Yeah, we don't get to see much, so there's that as well, mm-hmm. right? Uh-huh. Uh, who who do you got? Who do you got? Next. Um, I'll start with the bigger one. I'll start with Azula. Okay, yeah, I, I was gonna say that next. <laughs> don't know, cause first of all, Azula is not in book one in the animated show. She appears in book two. For oh, is she not? Time. She's not. She may be in the background. I think she's in the background of one in the Acne Kai scene, and that's it. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. She never said anything. Um, so the fact that they introduced her this early on, and the Fire Lord as well, more characterization in this compared to the animated show very early on. It's different, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I don't necessarily... I Again, I don't know if it's the portrayal. I don't know if it's the writing. It might be a bit of both, because Azula has always been written as someone who is a prodigy. 
she is just good and talented without even trying. She literally have mm-hmm. blue flame and no one have blue flame. And it's not because she tries hard. She's just that good. She's just that good. Yeah. In this one, she makes her motivation of trying to chase Zuko. Um, it's a very... Uh, I made this comparison while, uh, with my friend. The whole arc with um, Fire Lord Oza and Azula and Zuko is literally the arc of the Iron Claw of his generational trauma and toxic competitiveness between siblings and it's kind of what they're doing in this one like azula is trying to uh, chase zuko in terms of being good and so she's trying really hard which again maybe she'll earn um, the ability to bend blue fire i doubt it which i'm like kind of upset because like the blue fire is so iconic she already bends lightning so she's already Um, better than zuko no right uh but yeah like again the fact that she is not She's started off as non a non prodigy. She's just like she's getting there, mm. but she's not. She's gonna be good, but she's not. It's already a different characterization. Um, so yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I'm curious to see how it goes in season two. Um, it haven't been greenlit by the way, season two. So I'm hopefully it does because I do want to see a continuation of this take. Um, and also maybe because and this is uh not a criticism, just a comment on the whole thing because okay. I know. In the animated show, they are kids. They're supposed to be kids. Yeah. But the way how they're drawn, sometimes I don't necessarily think them as that young. Like I know they're supposed to be like 10 years old, 17, 13, however many years yeah. old. But in animated form, they just look a little bit older, you know? Um, but like, like because... I saw Azula and Zuko being like in their twenties or I mean, like twenty years old or eighteen, nineteen years old. The way how it's drawn, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the way how like it's at drawn. Least, at yeah. least, like late yeah. teenager or something. Yeah. Um, but in here, they all look literally so young, and like literally, like a full old middle aged man are trying to kill this ten year old boy. Yeah, I know. It just right? looks so funny to me. <laughs> and then, like um, Azula, at the end of the season, when Azula is leading a whole army with Omashu, and he's just like a little kid the, uh, with the whole army, I just found that so funny as well. <laughs> It's, like, when she it's, opened, just, it's just a she, perspective kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, everyone's listening to this one little kid. <laughs> yeah. Which, like, again, it's faithful, but I don't know. Like, the way how it's based on the perception of, like, real life and, like, animated is definitely make a difference. Um, yeah. 10 years old in real life and 10 years old in animated is very different. Yeah. <laughs> like, Aang, at least in the animated, I would have thought he's, like, 15 or, or something. You know? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's my thoughts on yeah. Azula. Is there anyone else for you? Um, not really. I think. I think. I have, yeah, I have anyone one else more. Is pretty good. Oh, you? Who do you I have? have? Ua feels off. I'm not the biggest fan of Ua. I love Amber Mid-Thunder as an actor. She's awesome in everything I've seen her in. I don't know. Again, I don't know if it's the writing. It might be the writing or her portrayal. It, she just feels off. She doesn't feel like Ua in the animated show. She the characteristics is just kind of gives me the wrong vibe it drops me the wrong way mm. so i wasn't okay. a fan also i did not but uh, i did not buy their chemistry between sokka and yue no in this one no nope. the, the chemistry between all. sokka and suki i feel it that, the sexual okay. tension in that episode i feel it <laughs> by the way maria Z- maria zhang Mary, suki, yeah absolutely love her. fella i love her so much <laughs> um so, but yeah, i i do not get the chemistry between yue and sokka in this one no, nah. this one's is kind of forced on trying to be faithful to animated, I guess. Yeah. Which also I think is because of it's an eight episode show based on a twenty two episode animated show. The pacing mm. feels all over the place. So it feels I'll rushed. Say that because we only got eight episodes, honestly, like between the characters, I don't really see them as friends like that tightly really? bond. Yeah, I don't okay. really see that because I feel like their bonding happens off screen. That's what I feel every, mm. whenever I watch it. And then because in the show, when they talk to each other, it's all about you know the the mission or what what's right. at stake type of deal. Right. So we don't, I don't really see them as that tightly bond family that that trying to give off the vibe. You know, they're just saying it. But yeah, I, I, I can know. I can see that. I definitely agree with you in some aspects. I can think of like several yeah. moments which showcase that they're bonding. 
when all these moments yeah. just have all of the moment happens to be on top of Appa <laughs> for some reason. I'm yeah, right. Um, <laughs> I'm like otherwise, I see, I see what you're saying. I, I can, I can agree with that. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think again because of the eight episodes and there's like so many stuff that they cut off, like the Haru um, storyline yeah. got removed. Um, the the big storyline that got removed is Jong Jong, Jong Jong, the that? fire fire bending. Ang learns fire bending in in book one oh. from a fire bending master. Yeah, he yeah, got, yeah. He was irresponsible. Burns Katara, makes him very like afraid to do fire bending, which is an important arc. Which is why she doesn't he doesn't want to do fire bending because he's afraid that it's gonna hurt people. And his whole thing is like I don't want to hurt people, right? And Katara also learned how to heal based on that episode. So that's like a big episode that they completely omitted. Um, and talking, about, talking about bending, sorry, I'm jumping all over the place. On what bending? Mm -hmm. Ang doesn't learn water bending at all in this season. No, Which is not. jarring to me because the whole premise of book one is about him learning water bending. Book one water. And he did That's what not it's called. bend water <laughs> at all. I'm excluding the spirit power at the end of the last episode. He's he doesn't bend water at all. Which is like yeah. they're gonna do in season two. Season two is about earth. When are they gonna cram in? When are they gonna cram in him bending water? It's just like it's, it's weird. Yeah, it's that is true. Choice. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I thought Ang would have. Uh, tried to learn water bending a bit in that one episode when Katara was learning from the scroll that, thing. That right? would have been the perfect because, timing because in the anime yeah. show it's all something like that as well. Yeah, but he ended up just giving advice to Katara, so it's like what? And he right. didn't even learn from uh, Master Paku. Paku. Yeah, right. He, they should have made him learn from Master Paku. Yeah, exactly. That's literally this whole arc. Like, oh, it doesn't. It does not make sense. So like that part is like kind of frustrating to me. Again, like stuff that they cut out. I understand yeah. they cannot put everything in, but like, why can't they do thirteen episodes? Literally, I feel like, yeah, Thir 12, 13 episodes I think would have been a lot better than eight. Eight feels very rushed. Yeah, yeah, for the plot points. Which is why, um, I like, I which is why I mentioned like, almost all the changes that they made, to me, are acceptable, but I don't love it. The only changes yeah. that I like was the Giazzo and the Air Nomads thing. The addition that I like, but every other addition, intermingling of subplots and everything else, I was like, okay, cool. I think the yeah. originals did it better, still. So yeah, it's like all of those are like kind of dead for me. Okay, okay. yeah, mm -hmm. I can agree on that. Um, mm -hmm. At least they kept the cabbages guy. <laughs> uh, which is also you. the same actor who who voiced same. the cabbage guy so yeah 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 mm -hmm. oh i was kind of sad in the omashu episode that they didn't like let ang did the whole was it the challenge the, the, not the, yeah the challenge thing but i was talking about when he was going down the carts and just destroying the whole omashu by accident thing oh <laughs> you know they did it very <laughs> briefly at the very end in the very end of the episode yeah, that's true. And yeah, also the challenge thing. It's kind of uh yeah. we didn't we didn't get to see we don't even get to see the the monkey bunny ear the thing. Fluffy. Flo flopsy, 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 flopsy. Yeah, 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 yeah. We didn't even get to see that. We, we see we see the statue of the bunny creature. Yeah. But yeah. But no. they make all the other creatures and not that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Boomy, Boomy, and Boomy's are Boomy's portrayal is interesting. Um, I like Danny Pudi as a mechanic. I think he did good. I think Jet is, is great. Jet is perfect. Um, I like Jet. I like Jet a lot in this. Jet's but... good. Perfect. This is not how he appears, right? In the no, cartoon. it's a, it's its own episode. It's outside of Omashu. Yeah, right. It's after Omashu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's after Omashu, I think. Um, yeah. And even the mechanic is like with the. It's not even here. The mechanic is in the Northern Air Temple. Of uh, way near the end of the uh, season, right? Yeah, huh. is that that's that's where like Ang is like upset that the temple got like changed with like all the um development. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm remembering yeah. the episode now. <laughs> yeah, and they even like they put secret tunnel, which is a it's a subplot of season two, and then they put into this one, mm. like yeah. um one uh, Wang Shiton, uh the owl. Uh, it's from season two as well. Season two. Seriously, okay, yeah. so, so how it goes. But yeah, yeah, again, overall, some stuff I like. Like I said, choreography, visuals, costume, some of the casting. I think the main leads are casted uh, very main well. Main leads are casted well. But the writing and the pacing, some of the changes, I'm not the biggest fan of. But again, 
I know that I can always go back to the original, so I don't hate the show as much. I'm like just seeing this yeah. as like, you know, a spin, not spin off, like a different take on it in a way. Different take, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> uh yeah before i give my final thoughts i guess i want to say mm -hmm. this uh i forgot to mention it just now when i'm talking about casting mm -hmm. i do not like zuko's mark on the uh, really on the eye. i think it looks it, great it looks like ketchup smeared on <laughs> i think it looks great man Especially with the scars and everything i think it looks good well uh, I, I feel like they should make the scars a bit more prominent or something okay. it just looks like Ketchup smeared on, and I'll, he can't wipe it off. I'll I don't say this like about. How it I'll, looks I'll at say all. this. I'll say this about Zuko. The fact that um, his hair in season one is so ugly and so goofy. The fact that they could make pull it off in live action. Props to the hair department because that could have looked true. so bad. <laughs> Props to the hair. It department actually looks pretty that. good on him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, real, real quick, an actor uh, character we haven't mentioned, General Commander Zhao, Admiral Zhao. Uh -huh. Not the biggest fan of this portrayal. Uh, they change a lot of stuff about his backstory. Uh, not the biggest fan of it. He feels a little bit off place, but you know, yeah. it's what it is. Yeah, true, true. I don't really like Zhao too much. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but yeah. Overall, though, the not the live action Laser Bender, the Netflix one, it's okay. It's pretty good. It's okay. I think it's not as bad as I thought it would have been. Yeah. Fair. So you came in with very low expectations. I came in with low expectation, thinking it's going to be ass. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. Uh, my expectation was all over the place because I, at first, I was excited, and then I went like, "Okay, this is gonna be bad." As soon as like I saw some of the trailers and everything, I was like, "Oh, this is not like too great." And my friend saw it, and my friend said it's good, and I was like, "Maybe it is good." So I'm like, I had like a little bit of hope, but yeah, at the end of the day, it's fine. I am never going to rewatch it again because i have the animated show that i can visit but i will still check out season two i'm curious what they do with it hopefully it get green light very curious about the changes curious about what they're going to do with azula um and especially um because the actors are going to age faster than the animated show gonna do that's true. i wonder i wonder what kind of timeline changes they're gonna make especially because season two is the introduction of um like the eclipse Susan's comet that's when they start putting time constraints in the story. I don't think they can do that here because they don't know when, when they're going to shoot and how old that is going to look. So I'm curious what they're going to do in terms of that. The aging technology. Oh my God. And then Aang suddenly gets way taller. Like, how do you yeah. Because <laughs> that's a problem. He gets, Bro, he gets he's... taller, but his face is still 10 years old. Dude, Gordon, Gordon Cormier, like in the show, he is like way shorter than Katara. If you see him yeah. in the press right now in the red carpet, he's like the same height as Katara already. It's like it's already already that fast. Because I don't know when they shoot this. Um, it's so not yeah, a it's green lit yet. All right. Already. Um, so yeah, that is my overall yeah. thoughts. And once again, Maria Zhang Asuki, awesome. Yeah. Okay, Albert. I think Albert got a new crush, new celebrity I, crush. As soon as, <laughs> soon as she uh, wipes off that makeup, I was like, oh well wow uh speechless uh what, wait what's happening <laughs> albert wish she was soccer at that moment <laughs> everyone everyone, everyone. wish they were soccer at that moment come on let's be real all right all right anyway uh let's close it off by give it giving it a rating out of five i guess yeah how much do you give it Bert? uh can i do decimal points yeah sure uh 3.5 yeah, I, I was about to. I was thinking. I was considering three point five or three. Um, you know what? Kind of enjoyed it a little bit more. It's better than I expected. So three point five. I'll give it that as well. There you go. Three point yeah. five minutes from both of us. Three point five out of <laughs> five for the first season of Netflix Avatar: The Last Airbender. Yeah. So yeah. Um, kind of looking forward to season two. I guess you know. Yeah, I want to yeah. see how they do Toph and everything. Right, Toph is season two. Hmm. <laughs> I want to see that tournament thing that she's in. Oh, yeah. That would be, be kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's the end of this um, review slash discussion type. So, yeah, we'll see you on the next one, I guess. Subscribe, leave a like, let us know in the comment section what you think of the show.